in my opinion, there should have never been a recommended volume range. If anyone has looked up a YouTube video on uh, training volume recommendations for hypertrophy, they probably heard somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 sets per week for muscle group and blah, blah, blah. blah. The reality is when it comes to communicating science, people don't, and I, and I learned this the hard way very much with, with uh, you know, the proximity to failure one is they ultimately are going to simplify the results to mm -hmm. an extent that people start to play a game of telephone and you've completely lost control of ultimately the narrative that is propagated from this project. So something that I think is useful, if you had to boil this down into kind of the new soundbite recommendation for set volume hypertrophy and generally thinking that on a weekly time frame how would you so essentially what i'm what i'm trying to compare this to is you know you if anyone has looked up a youtube video on uh, training volume recommendations for hypertrophy they've probably heard somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 sets per week for muscle group and blah 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 blah. you're almost certainly have heard that soundbite and again that's probably from the collective results of the schoenfeld meta-analysis and the bosval meta-analysis kind of collecting uh those together um, to create that kind of that general recommendation. The same thing went for RAR for zero to four RAR. That's the magic RAR range that you I'm sure you've heard when describing what's hard enough for a set for it to count. That is that concept is going to happen whether we like it to or not. Yeah. So my goal with this question is being the lead author of this project that put a lot of time thinking into this and ultimately trying to chew the food before people get it ultimately. Mm -hmm. And, and give that recommendation that you think is the most appropriate in terms of the representation of the results, what would you say to that question? Yeah, I think all that context is important. And I think all of the four and a half hours before kind of this quick takeaway portion is very, very important. There's, there's a lot of uncertainty here. Um, there's a lot of decisions that had to go into this. And, and we really value transparency and, and trying to give the best answer to the question and also point out all of the limitations. And in a lot of ways, when we think back to the, the previous recommendations of 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, I understand where they came from, um, but I also think there are some meaningful limitations to that recommendation and recommendations like that in general. For example, previously the questions have been more along the lines of, on the front end, let's take kind of a, a nice round number like 10 and let's determine if less than that or more than that is is better. I don't want to straw man previous approaches, but like that's been that's directionally correct, I think. Whereas our approach here is to not necessarily come in with priors about um, exactly what cutoffs there might be, and instead try to establish some cutoffs on the back end based on what the data say, and uh, try to be very cautious with how we're we're producing those cutoffs um, and communicating those cutoffs as well, because they're definitely not perfect cutoffs. All of that is to say is that the previous recommendations, such as 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, ultimately, there, in my opinion, there should have never been a recommended volume range. And I, I think there isn't and there never should have been a volume recommendation range. That is, that is my opinion, because that is not for us to decide like we've mentioned before. Instead, we can provide an analysis that describes the nature of the dose response relationship. In this case, you can make fantastic muscle growth progress from low volumes, and it is probably better. Your muscle growth progress will probably be better with moderate volumes, and it might be better with high volumes. So ultimately, I don't think it's our place to make volume recommendations. And I don't think, in a, in a lot of ways, I don't think there ever should have been volume recommendations. So we still need to come up with recommendations because a lot of people will come to us for practical recommendations and practical recommendations are helpful. So instead, the recommendation that I've landed on is more conceptual in nature and leaves the door open for all of these different factors, primarily related to an individual's values, their goals, and time availability, how they might tolerate a given uh, set volume, and keeping in, in mind that this is a continuous variable. This is not a categorical variable. You can select any volume you want. It's not a volume range. It's not low, moderate, or high. It's not nine sets or 11 sets. So ultimately, what we've converged on is that more volume is better with a smaller and smaller payoff until it starts working against you. We see a positive dose response relationship, right? More is better, but we see diminishing returns. So there's a smaller and smaller payoff. But we also acknowledge that, hey, a lot of these studies might not perfectly represent how someone trains in practice. They are short term. And there are a lot of other considerations when it comes to recommending volume 
or prescribing volume for a client or choosing a volume for yourself. So therefore, you need to think about some of those indirect negative consequences, such as deloading more often, psychological burnout, and ultimately just keeping the long run in mind. So therefore, you need to keep in mind that more is better with smaller and smaller payoff until it starts working against you. Beautiful. I think we're done.